नमस्ते वेलकम बैक टू स्थित पगना चैनल एंड यू आर वाचिंग के डब्ल्यू सर्टिफाइड क्लाउड प्रैक्टिशनर एग्जाम क्वेश्चन एनालिसिस सीरीज एंड वी हैव डन 19 पार्ट्स इन दिस सीरीज सो फार व्हिच कवर्ड 4 400 क्वेश्चंस एंड इट्स यू नो लिटिल बिट टाइम टू सेलिब्रेट बिकॉज़ 400 क्वेश्चंस इज नॉट दैट इजी एंड यू आर वाचिंग दिस वीडियोस यू नो for all these 400 questions and that is something to be uh, proud of and don't get discouraged if you feel like you know if you let's assume if you are one of those people who are attempting the quiz sets by now you might have seen we had three quiz sets and if you have done those quiz sets quiz sets and if you didn't score you know 65 out of 60 are above 60 or above 50 that's fine there is still room to improvement just watch the videos again and again until you understand them there are people uh, if you check the comments you will see some people they scored 40 or something when they are practicing but watch again and do those quiz set again and again then you will get there there are people who passed them the first attempt so don't get discouraged just believe in yourself and watch these videos when you watch concentrate on them and watch it don't do it like you are doing some other work but in parallel you are watching this don't do that okay because these are analysis videos which means you need to concentrate on these videos to make them get into your head or understand them if you are doing it in parallel with something then it this will just go from one year and will come out of the other year okay remember that and thank you very much for your support on this series we hit 100 subscribers and that is you know our starting milestone and let, let's reach to 500 by the end of next month i think with your support we can easily do that so let me appreciate your help in doing that thank you very much if you haven't please go ahead and subscribe and like and hit that notification bell icon which will help this channel grow thank you that being said let's start this session 401 an application deployed in the aws cloud has unpredictable usage patterns all right so we are already here unpredictable usage patterns we know the keyword as soon as you see that it can be it it's not just it can be it will be on demand but let's wait to read the rest of the question and is running workloads that cannot be interrupted okay by looking at cannot be interrupted you know to cross out spot instances that is eliminated what is the most cost effective amazon ec2 pricing option here okay so first of all they are asking cost effective at the same time they are saying unpredictable don't get confused by this two okay so what they ask in this later part of the question is already always secondary that is not primary at all because they have unpredictable usage part pattern that comes primary okay and the unpredictable patterns there is only one instance step that can handle which is on demand na reserved won't able to handle and dedicated won't be able to handle the reason being you already picked the capacity or the compute power that you want for one year or three years so there is no way that compute power you already have can handle the unpredicted whereas on demand is something that you deploy or increase it when you have your uh, unpredictable usage patterns okay so don't get trapped by the most cost effective first whatever comes in the question that is the first part of the question is very important second part is secondary first you need to meet this requirement then most cost effective within that after meeting this requirement among those which one is the cheapest here unpredictable usage is only one so we will pick that one a solutions architect needs to maintain a fleet of amazon ec2 instances so that any impaired instances are replaced with new ones which aws service maintain fleet of instances which means you should have if let's say i should have four ec2 servers all the time okay but what happened is there was a failure in one of server then it should get replaced with another one so which aws service will let you do that we already know that it is aws auto scaling auto scaling means you can scale up scale down which means you can add instances or remove instances using auto scaling none of the other tools can have the capability to do that because this protects 
against malicious uh, intrusions and etc aws shield ddos attacks ecs is a containerized service how can consolidated billing within aws organizations help lower overall monthly expenses okay now they are agreeing that to get to consolidated billing it is it is available only through organization because we have seen couple of questions asking that now what are they asking they are asking how how we know they are saying yes this will aid up by using consolidated billing within organizations you can lower overall monthly expenses but how okay how do you do that let's look at the options by providing a consolidated view of the monthly billing across okay so when you look at this option what is it saying it is saying you will go you will look at the consolidated view of multiple account then yeah that's how you are going to save monthly expenses it's like think think about like this uh, you open your credit card statement by looking at your credit card statement then it will help you lower monthly expenses no that won't help you it will show you wherever your expenses are and maybe if you have that dedication of okay i need to cut this down cut this down cut this down then you maybe cut it down and then you will lower it going forward but that consolidated billing is not making uh, not consolidated that viewing of the consolidated billing is not making you do that okay by automating the creation of new accounts through apis okay you can create automate account but how is that going to lower monthly bill no aws organizations it is not going to by leveraging service control protocols yes you can use scps but not for lowering monthly expenses scps for accesses purposes so that will leave us with option b by pooling usage across multiple accounts to achieve a pricing tier discount okay what is pricing tier discount you know you have we have the different saving uh, saving plans right so some of them how they work is there there will be a limit on how much you should have based on that you will get discounts now if you have individual account obviously you are not going to hit that limit so, but the consolidated billing in aws organizations what it does is it will put together all the usage across all the multiple accounts then obviously that is going to reach the limit for the discounts then the uh, discount is going to be applied and then you are going to lower your monthly expenses through that okay if it is confusing i have a, a link here you can see reserved instances savings and savings plan discount sharing so how you can do that you can see here important deactivating this discount sharing can result in higher monthly bill so you understand so you will agree that by activating these two there is something that you can save the management account of an organization can deactivate which means you can activate it from there as well uh, any accounts in that organization including management account this means that reserved instance and savings plan discounts are in shared between any accounts if this is deactivated but once you activate it then it is going to be uh, utilized between different accounts okay go read um, this article and you will understand how the consolidated billing is going to help you with these discounts when a user wants to utilize their existing per socket per core per virtual machine software licenses for a microsoft windows server running on aws which amazon ec2 instance type is required so it's been a while we have seen uh, this question basically they are talking about there are certain license types for different softwares where you have they will be linked with your per socket or socket or core or virtual machine which means once you install that software on one machine you cannot install it on another machine which also means any of these reserved instances we already know you cannot use that because when you spin reserved instances we never know where it is going to spin it on which uh, virtual machine behind the scenes it is going to spin on you will get the expected computer and uh, etc memory but it can be on any server spot instances we already know this is random uh, we won't even have them. at least reserved is for one or three years but spot is like you will only have it until there is a free compute space on a aws dedicated instances dedicated hosts dedicate we i think this i already explained but i am just explaining again because it's been some time 
dedicate the difference between these two are you will get a dedicated um, what do you call it you will get a dedicated uh, um, not server yeah kind let let me say it server behind the scenes but dedicated instance is that server will be only used by you it won't be shared by any other clients okay as i explained in one of the video when you spin an ec2 machine it doesn't mean behind the scenes you are going to get a complete server no there will be a bigger server on that uh, aws will install virtual machines which is your ec2 machines on it so it that server might have 10 20 virtual machines or ec2 by all the people all over the region okay so that is dedicated instance when you use dedicated instance what happens on that server aws won't spin any ec2 machines for any other clients that entire server will be for you but that server can be any server if, if if in a rack if there are 64 servers it can be any one of the 64 so if you have if you spin provision it now maybe it will be server number 10 when you provision it after server number 20 but server number 20 will be dedicated for you whereas dedicated host is behind the scenes if they are giving you server number 10 then server number 10 will be for uh, will be yours forever i mean obviously the until you uh, contract took the contract one or three years okay so they whenever you spin it will only be server number 10 that's it it will be for you and even physically that server behind the scenes will be the same so that is the difference so for this license purpose it has to be dedicated host you cannot change the server again and again instances they will but that server will be yours the company is looking for a way to encrypt data stored on amazon s3 which aws managed service can be used to help to accomplish this okay keyword is encrypt data and there is only one uh, particular service that encrypts data which is the aws kms which is the key management service a user has an aws account with a business level aws support plan and needs assistance with handling a production service disruption so they are talking about production service disruption which action should the user take okay since it's production service disruption it will be production system down support case it is not business critical because they didn't had a business critical instead it is a production service disruption those two are two different things and then we are not talking about these two as well because dedicated concierge, uh, concierge support team uh, this is available only for enterprise level okay so when a production service disruption happens you open a production system down support ticket which cloud computing advantage is a company applying when it uses aws regions to increase application availability to users in different countries to increase application availability to users in different countries it is talking about different countries okay so what cloud computing advantage they are talking about they are talking about global reach because it is about reaching throughout the country economies of scale is not about reaching uh, or making the application available to all over the world this is about the the more people um, use aws the cheaper they are going to give you the services that is economies of scale capacity forecasting we already know that it has nothing to do with available pay as you go we already know that these two are um, pricing related this is something else so the answer is global reach a company wants durable storage for static content and infinitely scalable data storage infrastructure at lowest cost we already know whenever you hear the word static you by default know the answer is SA. but then again they are asking infinitely scalable data storage at low cost the lowest cost storage is always s3 so the answer is s3 which aws service enables users to monitor for specific phrases values or patterns and set up alarms based on metrics monitor for specific phrases values patterns so they are basically talking about logs right when you run an application and then there will be logs but you can uh, specify some phrases values patterns and you can set up alarms on top of those metrics 
okay there is only one service which you can use to do that which is aws cloudwatch logs okay this is about user activity api calls it will make cloud trail and then you have comprehend and aws iq they are completely different comprehend is about machine learning algorithms and etc monitoring and management service that provides data and actionable insights on for aws on premise hybrid and other cloud applications and infrastructure resources you can collect and access all your performance and operational data in the form of logs and metrics so on and so forth uh, you can read further you will get a gist of what are the capabilities of cloudwatch features you collect you monitor you act you analyze then compliance and security which type of aws infrastructure deployment puts aws compute storage database and other select services closer to end users to run closer to end users to run latency sensitive application okay they are talking about putting all these near the client okay so there is another if you have outpost then it will be confusing but it is definitely not regions and it is definitely not availability zones because these are landlocked to a particular geographic area then it has to be either of this but edge locations you know you can you can only have uh, it is only used to cache data that is being uh, you know brought in by cdn or cloud front right you cannot have compute storage and database on top of edge locations the answer is local zones so it is uh, are a type of aws infrastructure deployment that plays compute storage database and other select service closer to large population industry and it centers so the difference between outposts is outposts you will literally put it in the data center of the client but this is not like that this local zones will only exist in the popular areas where there are larger population i mean even if we have larger population that is not the case but where there are too many aws users so and also obviously if there are too many users then there is large population then they will put local zones there so that you can have all these these right next to your company right because literal uh, in general aws data centers will be somewhere outside etc but this will be very close to these areas the company is building a new archiving system on aws that will store terabytes of data archiving system that stores terabytes of data the company will not retrieve the data often it will not retrieve data often which amazon s3 storage class will minimize the cost of the system okay we already know the lowest cost in s3 is glacier but again they put a condition here the data will not retrieve the uh, sorry they, the company will not retrieve the data often okay since they said that we can go ahead and pick the glacier because that is the cheapest but if they said if the data has to be retrieved within a certain time like seconds or minutes then we would have to contemplate between the other options but they, since they said it will not be retrieved the data often they didn't tell how often so that's fine we can go ahead and pick the glacier if they specifically tell you yes then but here this s3 glacier will satisfy the condition because you cannot retrieve data that often using s3 glacier which aws service does aws snowball edge natively support okay so you can install a couple of services on top of aws snowball edge device and it's none of this you can install amazon ec2 too. okay here is a documentation for that building a linux edging computing solution with aws snowball edge and amazon e2 read this you will understand how you can install amazon ec2 on top of snowball which task requires the use of aws account root account aws account root account user credentials okay so one of the below you can only do with using root account credentials okay which one is that closing an account closing an account is something that you can only do with root user credentials none of this you can delete im users with admin same thing same thing which aws service provides the ability to quickly run one time queries quickly run one time queries on data in s3 we already know one tool where you can do that 
which is Athena. Redshift, no, you cannot. I mean, you can using something called uh, spectrum tables, which are literally like external tables, but you need to have a Redshift cluster running. Whereas DynamoDB, yeah, you cannot run queries on top of S3 at all. And even EMR, yes, you cannot do that. This is managed Hadoop service. So the answer is Athena. Okay, here is the documentation for it. You can analyze petabytes scale data where it lives with ease and flexibility. And if I scroll down, you can see I is scalable. It is serverless, so you don't have to deploy anything like Redshift. You can see run queries on S3, on-premise or on other clouds. Which AWS services help to improve application performance by reducing latency while accessing global content? We already know as soon as you see reducing latency and global, the answer is global accelerator and CloudFront, which are right here. You don't have to check any other options. What AWS building support resource is available to all support levels? Okay, they are asking you, this should be an easy question because they are talking about all support levels. There are only few <laughs> that are. Concierge, we already know this is available for only enterprise level. And even technical account manager, we have discussed in the previous question, yes. Obviously, AWS business support won't be available because all support plans means there will be basic, right? So the answer we have is AWS customer service. It's an actually this is a free gear. A company is launching a new application in the AWS cloud. The application will run on an Amazon EC2 instance. More EC2 instances will be needed when the workload increases. Which AWS service or tool can the company use to launch the number of? Okay, we have we have done this question. I think was was it first or second in this video? Okay, we already know the answer, which is Amazon EC2 auto scaling. We don't even have to look any further. This is the same question asked in a different way. Adding, removing EC2 instances, auto scaling. How can a user achieve high availability for a web application hosted on AWS? It's very easy. Let's look at the options. We know we know the answer already, but let's look at the options. Use the AWS region with the highest number of available zones. Mm, that, how is that going to help high availability for a web application? No. And then you have set up automatic scaling and load balancing with another application instance running on-premise. Why is on-premise involved in this? Cross it out. We are talking about hosted on AWS. Use classic load balancer across multiple. No. Classic load balancer is actually getting deprecated. So that is that leaves with us option B. Use application load balancer across multiple availability zones. Yes. Why are we using application load balancer? So that we can balance the load on different servers. And when we have multiple availability zones, what what is happening? This will balance the load on the servers that are on different. So the high availability will be achieved because you installed the server where it runs the web application on multiple available. Even one availability zone is done. You still have it on other one application load balancer will take care of sending the traffic to the one that is healthy a developer needs to use a standardized template to create copies of a company's aws architecture for development test and production environments which aws service should the developer they are talking about standardized template to create copies of our architecture there is only one tool which can do it which we call infrastructure as code which means you write code to deploy resources in different environments why you need that because when you create a template and deploy it in dev you will make sure that you will repeat the same services same order in test and production so that is a best practice on how you need to deploy services okay so the answer is cloud formation which is the one that lets you De create those templates and deploy services on different environments okay so the, here we have a documentation about cloud formation it will speed up cloud provisioning with infrastructure as code go ahead and read through it i'm not going to spend much time there which aws service or feature allows a user to establish a dedicated dedicated network connection as soon as you see that what is the answer direct dedicated direct dedicated direct remember that all the others 
this one route 53 won't even uh, have the communication between on premise and cloud this is not used for that whereas we, we even vpc peering is between vpc and vpc the only other tool that lets you communicate from on premise to cloud is vpn but it is over public internet not through a dedicated network connection which aws service is designed to help users who want to use machine learning for nlp natural language processing but do not have experience in machine learning okay we have discussed about this uh, our discuss was i think in one of the question i told you about comprehend right which is a uh, machine learning tool where it uh, runs a an algorithm for natural language processing nlp okay it is comprehend we will look at the documentation of it it's none of this okay recognition is it identifies um, text and uh, different things from photos and videos sagemaker is you know in general it, it runs a name machine learning algorithm deep learning ams i think it has to do with deep learning even i never heard about it derive and understand valuable insights from text within documents so comprehend if you remember in our initial videos comprehend what it does comprehension right when you have documents from it it will extract text from it valuable insights from text in documents customer support tickets product reviews email social media etc uh, you can read through it here it will tell you it uses nlp service that xyz i'm not going to spend time but you get it which of the following are benefits of running a database on amazon rds benefits of running are this compared to an on premise okay there are so many benefits let's cross them out each one of them shall we rds inbound traffic control is managed by aws for example security groups you know security groups network access control list are never controlled by aws rds database compute capacity can be easily scaled yes it can be you can scale the capacity you can scale the storage as well wherein on premise you cannot do that i mean you can do it but it is not easy rds has no database engine license that is wrong whether it is on premise or cloud or like amazon you need to buy your database engine license rds supports any relational database uh, database no that is wrong it only supports few of them some of them are oracle mysql sql server and postgresql there are so many other relational databases it doesn't so the answer is another answer is rds back cups are managed by aws yes we have learned this in our previous video rds backups are indeed managed by aws automatically but the customer is responsible for the scheduling though when the backups has to happen 423 before going into this question subscribe to this channel hit the like and comment if you haven't done already so that will help the channel grow thank you again which of the following can be used to describe infrastructure as code we just spoke about this describe infrastructure as code which tool is that people it's cloud formation i don't have to go and open again do i no just remember infrastructure as code cloud formation think of this as like forming the cloud how are you forming the cloud using different aws services okay think of cloud formation as that a security officer wants to enable ipsec communications to securely connect to users from on premises network to aws instead of directly asking on premise to aws they are just showing you in a longer route which aws service we just spoke about this we just did it but they are asking you ipsec communications okay that is a key point here because if you look at it even aws direct connect lets you have the connection from on premise to aws but they are talking about ipsec communication so you need to be careful that is possible through vpn using an ip they are not talking about a dedicated connection so you can cross out direct connect okay so let me open the link ip just remember ipsec is done through vpn even though you can establish connection from on premise to aws using direct connect not the ipsec which aspect of aws infrastructure enables global deployment of compute and storage they're talking about global deployment of compute and storage okay so what do you think the answer will be which aws infrastructure this is not global 
this is dedicated to a particular geographical area tax i don't know why they are even talking about infrastructure and these two these are our infrastructure so it is the regions okay that will end this particular video i hope you found this video helpful uh, we covered 25 more questions and it took us to 425 if you are writing certification then all the best for your certification don't forget to do those quiz set that being said thank you very much for your support and have a nice day see you in the next one peace out